computer interface that they were using with paralysis cases, they were actually getting plugged in like the Matrix right. from the back of the head. Right. Big cord getting mm-hmm. plugged in mm-hmm. to your skull. Uh, so the fact that he's able to be mobile and he's just got this little backpack and walker with him, it's incredibly impressive. It really is. And this is him actually ex- explaining what the experience has been like for him. The most surprising thing, I think, happened after two days. Within five to ten minutes, I could control my uh, uh, hips. The brain uh, implant uh, picked up what I was doing with my hips, so that was uh, like yeah, the best outcome, I think, for everyone. It was uh, a long journey, but uh, at the end, I can really build uh, functional things from it. It's all been led by neuroscientists in Switzerland who've created what they call a digital bridge to help reconnect the brain with those muscles. And it's incredibly impressive to be able to see that happen. And of course, in addition to the fact that it's giving him the opportunity to have these small joys, as he says, stand up, have a beverage with a friend, you know, the things that you take for granted. It's also going to potentially help him with his actual therapy, because by reestablishing communication between the brain and those muscles, they think that is something that's going to continue to improve that naturally as well. Well, and his natural abilities. Wow, is so. the is it controlled in any sort of way, or is this a, a implant? Do you know if, if this is an implant and it works? just sort of him communicating with the implant or is there an external communication? Well, in terms of where the signal is going, there has got to be something then to send the message. So I presume that's what the backpack is. But the the actual signal from his brain is getting picked up by the implant. It's being communicated on Uh, then, which then is sending the signal on through another device. Yeah, it is. It's it's really incredible and interesting. Interesting, of course, to hear because there's been a story, Izzy, in the news as well about Neuralink. And we all know Neuralink has been working on these kind of brain-computer interfaces. And they say the idea as well is, is partially to do with therapy for people that need it. Exactly. And there's a big development. So this is Elon Musk's controversial brain chip company, of course. Neuralink is set to begin human trials soon, having finally gained FDA approval, although FDA has not made a comment on this. But the ultimate goal, as you said, you you mentioned brain-computer interface. It'll initially be used to help people with paralysis or motor neuron disease to communicate. Um, And the whole thing is, so Musk likened the surgical procedure to replacing a piece of the skull with a smartwatch. (laughs) Of course he did. So Neuralink connects to the brain but rests on the scalp and it's says its small battery will reportedly recharge wirelessly via induction. And so this is how uh, it actually works. Neuralink system consists consists of a computer chip attached to tiny flexible threads stitched to into the brain and it's something like a sewing machine like kind of robot type of thing it's, um, it's incredible isn't it that this idea okay we're talking about it in cases of therapy and that's that's so impressive and you mm-hmm. can see the huge need for that but pretty soon once we get to the therapy people are just going to be getting these chips stitched into their brains anyways right yeah <laughs> just instead of having their phone right they're going to internalize it it's yeah. all going to be in your brain I, I actually think it's not going to be just like in the brain itself i think like when it comes to the phone it's going to be stitched into your ear that they're going to just stitch it right in the ear and you just tap your ear to make a call or whatnot or something like that. You never really know. But so, but I do like the idea of how they use it in terms of the surgery, the whole paralysis thing to beat. I mean, yeah. that's just incredible. If this, if Christopher Reeves were alive today, I'm sure he would have, like, this would have been an easy test for him to go into something like that. But I think medical science makes more sense now that it's FDA approved for these kind of reasons. But when it comes to consumerism of phones and laptops, like, please, let's just keep it a little bit, little bit normal. <laughs> but, but the thing is, they've been trying stuff like this for years. Like, I can think of what Shark Tank season two or three, which is about a decade ago, where someone had come with a Bluetooth, impl- um, a Bluetooth implant that goes behind the ear for a phone because back then phones were just you know, a little bit basic. So, um, so yeah, this is not something that's new as such. People have wanted to integrate it into us for a very, very long time. Um, there's even a company out there that's working um, where you'll have a small little sensor which you can wear on like a shirt or whatever, but you've you've got the headset sort of planted behind your ear and that's it. Your your phone based interactions would be all through that. Um, so yeah, it's it's something people have wanted forever. It's, yeah, it's been shown to us forever. There are a lot of people that get into this like biohacking where they're also putting chips into their hands. Yeah. yeah, that's quite common as well. So you just don't have to bother with a little lock as if it's such a big hassle to yeah, get your keys out. NFC uh, b- uh, biohacking. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of that that's going on as well. You actually caught up with a doctor here. 
in yeah, any way about this. Yeah, I just wanted this. to ask a neurologist, uh, you know, he's a specialist u- uro- neurologist at Medcare Hospital Dubai. His name is Dr. Anas Abdul Majid. And I asked him, could this be happening here anytime soon? And are there any concerns on the part of medical practitioners such as yourself? Even though the threads which are thinner than human hair are surgically connected from the chip to the brain by surgical robot, damages may happen during implantation. The threads may fail as well. Other issues are privacy issues and ethical issues once this becomes successful. What do you mean privacy issues? You can actually hack into the implant? <laughs> well, I wonder once you have a chip in your brain, you can hack anything. So you? that's the reason I asked the question that is there a signal coming out? Mm. Because if there's a signal coming out, it's, it, it's hackable. So then there's going to be security issues on that front as well. Plus, then the other thing is going to be data collection. There's 100% going to be data collection involved. Yeah. So where's the privacy on that? So these questions will come up with all this stuff for sure. 100%. I mean, I'd be curious to know how far can this go? Can you get it uh, like for a paralysis mm-hmm. person just for the sake of, you know, like, you know, discussing is that a paralysis person, could he get an implant to control a robot to mimic his everyday life? Could that be the next phase? Could we see? I mean, there's there was a movie on this with Bruce Willis, if I'm not mistaken. I'm um, trying to remember yeah, it. Where where, they, where their human bodies are encased and frozen while their clones or drones are operating their everyday life. Oh, yeah. I mean, could could this actually be the next step of how ev- like the next phase? Like, we are not worried on harm. Or so. Could could the military could use something like this to you know to control war? You know, does it become all just a game now? I mean, there's so many enticing things even out of consumerism that can lead to something like this. Now that it's FDA approved and everything, but the 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 limit, the idea. Well, ideas, it's approved for t- trials. It's approved yeah. for trials. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but that, but that that's as good as like as it gets, right? Like yeah. we're we're at that state now where we're seeing Back to the Future coming to life. <laughs> yeah, it must be noted that, uh, you know, requests for clinical trials to be approved have been rejected in the past. Right. So in the past, in recent years, this technology has definitely improved and they're, they're working hard to kind of optimize it. Okay, okay. are we all going to be cyborgs? Let us know what you think <laughs> on 4001. That's what we're discussing on the reboot. Hey, brother, there's an end.